Hi, I'm Eric Skoglin from Olathe Northwest High School in Kansas, and in this video I'm going to break down a variety of the different forensics events you may be seeing as you judge a tournament here in Kansas. I'm going to do my best to describe the events in general without giving you my spin on the ideal form of these events. So you may come away asking questions like, what does the good and bad performance look like in these different events? And my answer would be it's different for different coaches. So I'm going to try to avoid that as best I can. Depending on when you are judging, you may find yourself judging a variety of different events. On Friday, these events are the different debate events. You may see congressional debate, Lincoln-Douglas debate, and public forum debate. On Saturday is when we compete in all of our speech and interpretation events. So you'll see humorous and dramatic interpretation, duo interpretation, extemporaneous speaking, prose and poetry, program of oral interpretation, informative speaking, impromptu speaking, and original oration. If you're judging on Friday, one event that you may judge is congressional debate. In this event, students are performing a mock Congress session. There are usually between 15 and 20 students in a Congress chamber from a variety of different schools that are attending that tournament. Sometimes that number might be a little bigger or a little smaller, but usually 15 to 20 is ideal. Students will have prepared legislation ahead of time and been assigned a packet of legislation that they are going to be debating at that tournament. Students should be making arguments for and against the various pieces of legislation in that packet, asking questions of their fellow representatives or senators, and overall engaging in a debate. One student will be elected to serve as the presiding officer for the chamber, and that student will run the chamber and control the debate. Your job as the judge is a couple of things. First, each speech should be scored on a scale of one to six points. Second, each presiding officer should be scored once per hour on that same one to six scale. More points is better. At the end of the session, you should rank your top number of performers. Usually this is eight, but it may depend on the tournament you're at. You may want to consider including the presiding officer in your ranking, and then you return that ranking to the tournament officials. Other Friday events are more direct clash type debate events, either one-on-one -on -one in Lincoln-Douglas debate or two-on-two -two in public forum. In Lincoln-Douglas, students are debating a question of value or ethics, and the resolution changes every couple of months. So if you're used to judging policy debate, you may find that an LD resolution is narrower in scope than the resolutions you'd see in policy. Traditionally, the focus in Lincoln-Douglas debate is on a general truth rather than specific plans or extreme outlier cases. However, some students may take different approaches to the resolution. Your job as the judge is to vote either affirmative or negative, and you'll award quality points to each side in the debate. Your points may tie if you feel the debate was, extent was particularly close, but the winner may not have fewer points than the loser. Another format of debate you may find yourself judging is public forum. Public forum is a two-on-two -two debate format that is designed to sort of model what you might see on a news magazine type of a program. The resolution students are debating will usually have some kind of connection to particular current events or policy questions that are actually being grappled with by our government or by governments around the world. The topic in public forum is usually relatively narrow, and so the debate will focus on comparing the impacts of each side of the resolution. Just like an LD, you're going to vote either pro or con and then award points to each team. The same rule will apply that the winner may not have fewer points than the loser. On Saturday, many of the events you may find yourself judging are a variety of speaking events. Oration and informative are both prepared and memorized speeches. The students will come to the tournament already having their events prepared and they will give the same speech in each round of competition. During their performance, students should not be referring to any notes and should not have anything with them at all in original oration. In oration, the primary purpose of the speech is to persuade the audience about something. And in informative, the purpose is to inform the audience. Both speeches have a 10-minute time limit. Additionally, in informative, 
students are permitted to use visual aids to accentuate their presentation. There are a couple of rules about visuals that you probably don't need to get into, but just be aware that, for instance, students may not use electronics as part of their visuals, and so that would be why you won't see anyone like wheeling in a projector or anything like that. The other speaking events are limited preparation time events, which means that students will arrive at the tournament not having already prepared these speeches. Impromptu speaking has the shortest prep time. After drawing and selecting a topic, students will have five minutes to prepare a five minute speech. During that preparation, students usually may not have access to any outside resources, so you can't really expect students to have a lot of research or sourcing in the impromptu speech they present to you. However, you can expect that students should have a speech which has some kind of a thesis and has at least a connection to the topic they've drawn. Students should avoid giving canned speeches, which could be the same speech every single round of the day in impromptu. In extemporaneous speaking, on the other hand, during students' prep time, they do have access to the resources and materials that they have prepared ahead of time. They'll have 30 minutes to prepare a seven-minute speech answering a question about current events. In extemporaneous speaking, some of the rounds that you'll see will be about domestic extent, meaning United States-focused topics, and some will be international extent, so topics could resolve anything around the world. A successful speech in extemp should have several sources to back up and justify the claims being made in the speech. A few of the interpretation events are read directly from a small binder. In prose and poetry, the pre presentation can be up to seven minutes long, and students are selecting one or more works of literature that fit within that genre of either prose or poetry. Because they're reading out of the binder, the presentation does not need to be memorized. However, you may find, especially if you're judging later in the season, that students often seem like they have the piece pretty well down. That's because they've been giving the same presentation many times this season. In prose and poetry, there is only one rule about the movement around the stage, and that is that the performer's feet should not move. Other blocking is permitted. They may move their bodies around, they may do whatever they want with the binder, that kind of thing. It's just that the feet may not move. In Program of Oral Interpretation, the presentation is 10 minutes long. And in this event, students are weaving together a variety of different genres. So you might hear some drama, some poetry, some nonfiction, some short story, all within the same presentation. And they'll usually be woven together so that you'll hear small clips from each one as the student works to achieve an overall effect or purpose. In POI, there are no rules about the movement around the stage. They may move around the stage and involve the binder as part of their performance. The other interpretation events are all 10-minute cuttings from a work of literature. In all of these events, the presentation is memorized, and so students should not have a script or anything with them as they are performing. In humorous or dramatic interpretation, the student is performing everything by themselves. If the piece they've selected has multiple characters, that student will perform all of those characters. In HI, humorous interp, the goal is, of course, to depict a humorous story or scene, whereas in DI, dramatic interp, the goal is that the scene be dramatic. Duo interpretation is a two-performer event. It is not separated by topic area, so in the same room you will very likely see some performances that are humorous and some performances that are dramatic, and indeed some performances that include aspects of both humor and drama within their individual 10-minute performance. The thing that's interesting and different about duo is that the performers are not permitted to touch or make direct eye contact except during their introduction. This can lead to a lot of interesting choices regarding the blocking the movement around the stage and the ways that they can try and create the effect of the scene in front of you. If you have other questions about the different events, feel free to reach out to the coach who's hosting the tournament where you're judging. Once again, thank you so much for volunteering your time to our students who are working very hard to present for you this weekend.